I bought it uh, from a private party in West Bend. The car was five years old, had uh, 25,000 original miles on it. And I took it home with the purpose of modifying it. <laughs> and uh, I was 35 years old at the time. And I spent about two and a half years, uh, about 1,100 hours of spare time uh, creating what you see here. And uh, we put a, a 327 V8 in it with a 400 turbo transmission. Uh, we put a, a Ford 9 inch rear end in it. It's got cross torsion bar suspension with a watch link and a four link setup in the back. Uh, I then I modified the body. The hood is uh, off of a L88 Corvette. The sunroof is out of a Peugeot, that's a French car. Then I made the grill completely by hand. <coughs> And uh, all the ground effects and all the wheel flares, they were all made with round rod and then plated in with sheet metal. Uh, the same on the back here. One of the fellows that worked for me built the headers and the side exhaust. Uh, Mike has redone this exhaust since he got it back, but it, it looks just like it did when Bill did it for me. Uh, the interior is completely handmade. I made the whole dash. The instrument cluster is out of a 68 Dodge Charger. And then I made the center console all the way through because all of a sudden there was a drive shaft going through the car. <laughs> the uh, seats are out of an Opel GT. And the interior was done by Carl Kasperzak. He went, his shop name was Kaspers. And back in the 70s, late 60s and 70s, he did all the top show cars in the area. This interior is 51 years old. I mean, it looks exactly like brand new yet. And then I put this wing on the back. The wing is off of a, a 70 Judge, and the uprights I made. And uh, it's got cross torsion bar. Oh, I think, believe, believe I said that already, torsion cross-torsion bar suspension in the rear. And uh, when we got the car back, thank God it was repainted white, but originally I had painted it white, and then it had a flag that flowed on the side here, and the American shield was, was back here, and on top of the wing was the, was the bald eagle spread out. And I, uh, Judy, I think I have maybe a picture here that we could probably capture. That you only saw that when the light hit the paint at a certain angle. You know, I when I got the car done, I was going to put a real wild paint job on it, and I said to my wife, "I just want the darn thing done." So I painted it, and I said to her, "Well, it's done, but I'll never get any paint awards." Every show I went to, I won best pearl or best paint, and I think it was the unique neatness. You know, now nowadays there's a thing that's called ghost flames. And a lot of people have them on their cars and that were well, back in the in the early 70s there were no ghost flames you know so this was very unique at the time and it, it <clears throat> a friend of mine said that was the best thing you could have done because the people were looking at all the work that was done on the car and then all of a sudden they noticed the paint you know so uh i sold it in 1975 after uh showing it on the show circuit for a year uh, there's five different magazines that did uh, articles on it. Hot Rod did two of them, and uh, Rod Action and some other ones. But uh, anyway, I sold it in 1975. Never dreamt I'd see it again, you know. But, you know, one of the funny things is when Mike presented it, I said to him, you know, hundreds of times probably over these past 48 years, I'd say to my wife when I woke up in the morning, well, I drove the Corvair again last night. Now I can. So, Why did you sell it in the first place? I think at the time we were redoing an old farmhouse. And uh, plus, I, I've had a lot of show cars over the years. I've had national championship cars, you know, and... Uh, I always, when it was done, that was the biggest part of it, building it, you know. 
And after you showed for a little bit, then he had another idea, you know. And I never had the money to keep the one that I had, so that had to go to go on with the next project, so. When you were at Jugs and you're going through the parking lot and they're taking you to the lower lot when the restaurant yeah. is, what were your thoughts? I, I said to my son, I said, why don't you park up in front? Mom don't walk so good, you know. So I had no idea. I mean, uh, we were just, when he backed that out, we, we just bawled really, you know. I still do. I don't know if you can take this one. If you can take that maybe later. Yeah, I'll that's, take that picture. That's a picture of when he was ready to back it out. Can you explain that feeling? Yeah, I mean, I was just, I was in total shock. Uh, my son thought they might have to get the medic. <laughs> Yeah, it was, and then all these old friends, you know, that re remembered the car and... Uh, Dennis, yeah. what was one of the first memories, like when, when you saw it, you know, so much is going through your head, oh, but... Boy, I just, uh, like I said, me and, uh, me and Pat were just in shock, you know, we just, uh, I, I, I just didn't know what to say. I, I just never dreamt I'd see this car again. Although I, I dreamt about it a lot, you know, and uh, a lot of people talked to me over the years, you know, oh, I remember that car, you know. In fact, when we <coughs> were headed at the Allentown show, <coughs> uh, at one time I used to work for Ted Lock Chevrolet, and then when I went on my own, I got the car done and I went down to Mr. Lauk and I said, is there any chance I could put the car in the showroom for a while? He said, sure, you know. So it was down there for a week. And then at Allentown, one elderly lady came up and she said, when I was in high school, uh, we went down one time by Ted Lock Chevrolet. Is that the car? I said, yes, it is. So uh, a lot of people still remembered it, you know. It was kind of a, a unique, one of a kind vehicle, you know. And when we had it down at the World of Wheels in January, a lot of people talked about the uniqueness of the car, and a couple of them said, you know, we can look at Mustangs and Camaros and Mopars all day long. This is different. So. I tell you the grills from the top of a West Bend Company humidifier, back in the big square box yeah. ones with the wheel in, you remember those? We need some of those. If anybody's grandma's got one in the basement, <laughs> and whatever. We, we need some of these panels because we're having a, we've got a few defects there that we'd like to improve on. And uh, the reason I called it Very Fine is the nicknames for Corbeers was, was Bears. So I thought Very Fine, you know. And uh, originally when I uh, built it, it had Hilburn fuel injection on it and it ran on straight alcohol. And that's how it looked when I originally showed it. And then explain the other things piece by piece that you put in. Well, that's basically them. all stock except the headers. The headers. What's the header? Where am the I? The headers. Looking? Okay, oh. these are the headers. Okay. And they were built by Bill Hudson. He worked for me at the time. And he also did a lot of the rear suspension work for me. And those headers also did, they are 51 years old. And then these headers go through the fender up here and then they connect to the outside exhaust. And the car, when, when Mike bought it, it had the same wheels and tires on it yet. Oh. 